the big thing is, is that they're pretty straightforward. The whole purpose of the gas ejector, and this is the simplest terms I, I can tell you, is so the medium temp transcritical compressors doesn't have to do the work or as much work. So it's taking the load from the medium temp transcritical compressors and putting it on parallel compression. Welcome to another Refrigeration Mentor Podcast and the CO2 Monday show. Today, what I'd like to talk to you about a little bit about ejectors, because I used to think it was comp, they're really complex and, and CO2 refrigeration is complex, but the more you learn of it, the more you get explanations from different people makes it easier. Because the first time I seen ejector was the Danfoss multi-ejector, it's this big block and it has a lot of sold noise on it and it looks really intimidating at first but as you walk through it and get a better understanding of exactly how it works you have two coming in two lines coming in one going out so you got high pressure gas going in from the gas cooler you got your medium temp suction coming from your evaporators and then you have your out back to your flash tank and i want to walk through i'm going to share a screen right now share my screen so this is just a working document I'm working on right now, and I'm going to walk through it with you. If you have any questions, please let me know. This is going to be a good session. So here's a picture that I took uh, from the Teco event and kind of got a little circle around one of these valves. This is a womb valve. And, and really, the whole purpose of the gas ejector, and this is the simplest terms I, I can tell you, is so the medium temp transcritical compressors doesn't have to do the work or as much work. So it's taking the load from the medium temp transcritical compressors and putting it on parallel compression. And so the difference, we talked about this, go check the podcast I did on high ambient strategies. I talk about that uh, and efficiencies on parallel compression. So what parallel compression is versus medium, medium temp or transcritical pressure, it's running at a higher suction pressure, more like the flash tank pressure versus the medium temp suction. And we talk about this all the time. I talk about all my compressor programs and I even have one coming up now. I'm going to put it in the chat. Give you a link so if you know anyone that wants to take a compressor program this is the one to do it but you have that smaller pressure ratio smaller compression ratio that is less work on the compressor on the system that means it takes less energy to get the the amount of capacity you're looking for so what the ejector is doing once again it's taking the gas that's coming from the suction line evaporators medium temp suction line evaporators and it's putting it into the flash tank. And then the flash tank is putting it through the parallel compressor instead of going into the medium temp compressors. And this is kind of what it looks like. I want to kind of give you a, sh a show. So here we got, I'm just going to grab a compressor over here and we'll just throw a bit through one. So this would be our medium temp compressor. And this is not to scale. This is the Danfoss Cool Selector 2 app that I'm using here. And this is a kind of a screenshot from it. So definitely not to scale. But I'm just going to say like we're around 400 PSI. That's I think 18 bar ish. So we're, we're coming in at say 20 Fahrenheit. We're coming in around 410 PSI. And what this is the compressor that goes up into the gas cooler. Here's our gas cooler right here. Gas cooler condenser. We're above the critical point right here. So this is our cycle. We go up into the gas cooler condenser and then we come down to, to our drop leg here. So, so now here's our drop leg. So usually what you'd see is you'd see a high pressure valve right here for an example. And so we got our high pressure coming into our high pressure valve from our drop leg of our gas cooler condenser into the high pressure metering device or throttling device, whatever you want to call it, reducing that pressure down from say 1400 PSI, 1450 PSI or hundred bar down to the flash tank receiver pressure, which could be say 500 to 550 PSI, 32, 33 bar to 38 bar ish. And so that that's the throttling valve. So this is your basic booster cycle. And then we would leave and then we would go out of our flash tank receiver into our flash gas bypass valve which is usually right here, we would say. And once again, it's not the scale. And then that would go around through your medium temp. So this would be the cycle. 
that would be it. So anything like in the middle of the summer when it's really warm out, you got a lot, we got way more flash gas than liquid. So inside the flash tank receiver, you're getting a higher percentage of vapor than liquid. So that means this valve is doing a lot more work. These medium temp compressors are doing way more work. So now the idea of what the ejector does with parallel compression. So what happens here now is that you'll have a parallel compressor. I'll just grab this Durin compressor. I'll move it over here. This is your parallel compressor. So the way parallel compression works now is that here's our medium temp, goes through our, our gas cooler condenser, comes down through our throttling valve, our high pressure valve into our flash tank. And when it's really warm out, all of a sudden this gas will go this way through here and then through this parallel compress compressor. And then when that is, when you have more than, more than it can handle, it'll go through the flash gas bypass valve and then down back into the medium temp compressor. So where the, the ejector comes in now, so what the ejector does, so instead of going through your high pressure valve, now this ejector is actually acting as your high pressure valve. So in theory, you don't need to have a high pressure valve, but most of the manufacturers that I see, they will have an ejector valve in parallel with another high pressure valve. So when that ejector valve maxes out, because that's going to be the first stage, when it maxes out, then it'll move over to the high pressure valve. So really how this works, this would come over here into the ejector. And what happens is you get this high pressure gas coming into here. So we'll say 1450 PSI, it's really hot out, 100 bar. So that's what's coming down our drop leg. And then from our medium temp, so let me just move over. So now the, here's our medium te temp circuit. So we're going to take the suction gas here. I'm just going to do a little loop-de-loop around here. Right up into here. And so now all this suction gas leaving those medium temp evaporators will take this line here. It'll go around into this ejector. So I have so much high pressure gas going into this ejector. There's like a a Venturi, uh, it's in a Venturi style. So you get this high pressure gas going through, which is actually sucking up this medium temp suction vapor into here. And then from this, this goes in to the flash tank. And so now, instead of this medium temp gas going back to the medium temp transcritical compressors, it's going back into the flash tank. And now it's going up into the parallel compressors right here. And now this is gonna save a ton of work on the system. Depending on the design, I've been hearing 10 to 15% more efficient. And don't quote me on that because it'll all depend on the design. It'll all depend on how many compressors, how big the load is and, there's, and the, the design conditions. The big thing is, is that they're pretty straightforward. The piping looks complicated because it's so tight because they want to end users what they want. They want the smallest, most compact, lightest piece of equipment that is out there. So the manufacturers are building what they're looking for. But these gas ejectors, and here's the, the Corel style right down here. This is what they look like. They do the same thing. So what they're doing, they're just taking, instead of sending that medium temp suction gas to the medium temp compressors, it's taking it back putting it into the flash tank, and then from the flash tank is going to the parallel compressor instead of the medium temp compressor. Don't be intimidated by this stuff. You got to learn it. You got to take the time. This is why I do CO2 programs all the time, because the more you see it, the more you do it, the more you work on it, the easier it gets. I used to think gas ejectors was very complicated and difficult, and it is a bit more complicated and difficult. But if you never try to learn it, you don't spend the time learning about these things, it's gonna, it's just gonna take a lot more. These are, I'm starting to see them more and more. Once again, I said in Europe, I see this all the time. The two, the biggest things about these gas ejectors, they're to help system become more efficient in warm ambient climates. So we're where it's really warm. I'm I'm seeing more and here more. They're on heat pumps. Therefore, using for heat reclaim, and we're going to continu continually evolve 
our technologies globally. So take the time, learn a little bit about ejectors. So once again, thank you for taking the time to hang out with us and please share this. Please share this, hit the like button, hit the share button, share this with people because this is how more people are going to learn about these technologies because it's here and we want to prepare uh, the people out there. Again, my name is Trevor Matthews. Let's get a conversation going.